Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. Tonight, the hype over Obamacare comes crashing down. At this very moment, right now, the Obamacare website, healthcare.gov, is officially shut down. As if it were ever working in the first place. Congressman Darrell Issa on the hunt for what the White House knew and when they knew it. And losing faith, why one religious leader considers Obamacare blasphemy. Plus, a Utah doctor accused of killing his beauty queen wife, my exclusive interview with his attorney. But first, to my open. Did the president lie? Did the president know? And if he didn't know because he wasn't told or because he was hoodwinked or worse, lied to, why aren't heads rolling? Why haven't people been fired? Why? Because that's not Obama's M.O. What happens in this administration stays in this administration. Now, doesn't that tell you something? Do any of you really think he didn't know? Consider this. You've got a great job. Your boss assigns you a task with an unlimited budget but a deadline. You swear it will be done. When it isn't, your boss is mortified and publicly humiliated. Do you think for one minute you would keep your job? I don't know about you, but anyone who worked for me would be afraid to even show up at work. But not in Washington. Not with the Obama administration. It's a badge of honor to simply say, I take responsibility. No consequences, no sanctions, and more often than not, a promotion. This week, as I sat in that Washington hearing room listening to Secretary Sebelius, who ironically is from Kansas, I literally thought I was in the land of Oz. Democrats were actually congratulating her on a job well done thanking her for the millions of Americans who owe her, more than anyone else, a debt of gratitude for their health care. Really? I know the scarecrow didn't have a brain, but there was only one scarecrow on Oz. And what planet was I on? Did they miss the yellow brick road as they were high-fiving each other? And by the way, I didn't see any red heels clicking under that table that would magically turn on the website so that millions could actually get the health care that they were congratulating Sebelius about. But apparently, their yellow brick road can only hold six people. Only six people? <laughs> that means more people have walked on the moon than have signed up for Obamacare. And listen to this. Of those six that signed up, four have already died of old age. So it's only two left. But my favorite part of the hearing? It is the Verizon server that failed, not healthcare.gov, and it affected not only HHS, but other customers. Now, I don't know about you, but I have Verizon. And my Verizon works just fine, thank you. And I've had no service interruptions since October 1st. But maybe the Verizon plan in the land of Oz is different than mine here in New York. Seriously? But of course, it's always someone else's fault. So why did they look us in the eye and swear it would be ready on October 1? Why the lies? If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan. Period. We can't keep our doctors and we can't keep our health care plans. Mr. President, with all due respect, you lied to us. You sold us a bill of goods that puts many of us in a danger zone as we're being dropped from health care plans and one that will only burden our kids for generations to come. And in your zeal to blame on others, you now have a new enemy for us, the insurance companies. Why is it, Mr. President, that you get it right? 
What you want, you get right. If it's about you, like fundraising or winning an election. Uh, we had the president, to his credit, uh, almost uh, seven weeks out, was saying, are we ready? And to be told by the pros, yeah, this looks like it's all ready to go, all in line. And uh, neither he and I are, um, are uh, technology uh, geeks. So. <laughs> the president, to his credit, asked about it seven weeks before. He's been promising it for three years. Did you need someone to play the buffoon? Mr. President, five years ago when you were elected, they couldn't tear your Blackberry away from you. And now the vice president is telling us and they want me to believe that you don't understand websites? And what makes me crazy is that every Tom, Dick and Harry has a website. I can go on Amazon right now to buy a mop, my book, Clever Fox, or even a pair of red high heels to click under a table. And not to digress, but the prosecutor in me wants to know why a contract for the most important program, the crown jewel in your administration, is awarded to one of the first ladies, dear friends. Essentially, a no-bid contract for a defective product. So simple Sibelius stays on. What makes you think she can get it right now, especially when she's got the same people working on the website who couldn't get it right in the first place? Don't you have lawyers review your contracts? Every first-year law student knows a time is of the essence clause needs to be put in a contract, even a no-bid one, Mr. President, where a product must be delivered by a particular date. Otherwise, there's a penalty. But not you guys. Not only did Sibelia say there was no penalty clause, she's willing to pay more to the same company that couldn't get it right in the first place. More of our money. Some manager. But then again, your lawyer in over his head holder probably missed that contracts class. Mr. President, with all due respect, you have promoted Obamacare for years. If it's so great, why aren't you on it? Why isn't Congress on it? Why aren't federal employees on it? Even simple Sibelius refused to go on the very health care program that you all think is so great for the rest of us. And her excuse, when pressed, that it would be illegal for her to do so. There's a reason I call her simple. It's not illegal even in the land of Oz. And what makes you think that you know better than we what is good health care for us and our families? A true leader leads by example. Instead, you look down your nose and dictate to the rest of us. You reign on high as you give waivers to your union friends, the ones who got you elected, while the rest of us face massive premium increases we simply can't afford for benefits we simply don't need, like maternity benefits and pediatric health care. In the past, Poor people who couldn't afford health care had Medicaid. Now you've made affordable health care so unaffordable that virtually everyone is now signing up for Medicaid. So here we are, a day late and a dollar short, with millions literally without health care, and believe me, it's only going to get worse. So don't try to sell us your bill of goods. The website is not up and running. We can't keep our health care plans, and we can't keep our doctors. Stop telling us what's good for us. The truth? You've lost all credibility. No one believes you anymore. Maybe Hillary was right. What difference does it make? None of this affects you. With me, House Energy and Commerce Committee member, Ohio Congressman Bill Johnson. Uh, good evening, Congressman. You were in that room during the testimony this week of Secretary Sebelius. Should she be fired? Well, you know, the Secretary serves at the pleasure of the President, and uh, I just heard your, uh, your opening. 
Uh, I would never have survived in my career as a program manager, as an implementer, as an integrator if I had performed this way. And if this is the kind of performance that's acceptable to the president, uh, then I think the president has got some accounting to do to the American people. Well, and you know, Congressman, as uh, I'm sure you've heard from your constituents, so many people are now being faced with increased premiums for benefits that they don't need, don't want. Um, you know, and there really is nothing more personal than your doctor and the ability to keep that doctor. It, don't you find it astonishing that something as important as this was not ready for prime time, and they looked you guys in the eye, and they said, we will absolutely be ready when they never even did an end-to-end -end testing? Oh, yeah, uh, and, and the flaws go all the way back to the beginning. You know, I've looked at the contract. Uh, there was supposed to be a major review of, of testing uh, in the fourth quarter of 2012, another final review of that testing in the uh, first quarter of 2013, with plenty of time to fix any errors or any problems that they discovered. And it's very, very clear that they never did any of that testing. Uh, and you mentioned it just a few minutes ago. You're talking about the fox in the hen house. Uh, 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 QSSI, the, uh, the company that's now been hired to finish this integration, to finish something that CMS could not do right the first time, they were an independent tester. Now, I say independent very loosely because they were also part of the development team. So how can a member of the development team <laughs> be an independent tester of a complicated implementation like this? And now they're being placed in charge of, uh, of integrating the entire system. Uh, there, there are a lot of unanswered questions. Congressman, here. you are so right. The fox over the hen house. Thank you so much, Congressman Johnson, for being with us. We're going to stay on this. Thank you. And coming up, Congressman Darrell Issa and the facts that led to the disaster known as Obamacare. And tonight's Instapoll, how would you fix Obamacare? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine. We'll read your answers later in the show.